Today, I am delighted to speak with Dr. Fanny Le Boulanger. Fanny, you have embarked on a unique journey from being a family doctor practicing gynecology to becoming a sex coach and an advocate for self-love and pleasure. Combining modern scientific concepts with ancient tantric traditions, you are passionate about helping women reclaim their sexual empowerment and live their best lives filled with pleasure and fulfillment. Fanny, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to. Thank you for everyone to listen to, to tune in as well. Uh, I'm uh, looking forward to this uh, conversation, Fanny, and we will um, explore uh, today self-love, sex, and how our capacity to feel pleasure is one of the greatest tools we have uh, to create our life, which is, I find this uh, a fascinating topic. Um, Before we go there, uh, I'd like to ask you to give us a a bit more uh, background about that uh, transition in in your career. So what was happening then and what triggered that uh, shift? The shift started a little bit before because I have like a really usual story of you don't want to listen to life until you get hit. So Uh I got a diagnosis of epilepsy at age 26, which is kind of late. And um, I started to do a lot of self-inquiry and I did a ton of self-development and I started to feel there was something wrong because I spent more and more time speaking to myself, healing myself and felt not not as good as I thought I would be regarding the investment of time, money and everything I put there. Mm -hmm. So I started to have doubts and Then what happened is two things at the same time. First, I thought, I realized that it wasn't normal actually to only get orgasms from my partner. And I heard so many people around me saying that was the same. And in my medical practice, because I'm doing gynecology on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. I started to see more and more women. I had no answer. They had pain during sex, for example, and all the exams were normal. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you're going to see a sexologist who has six months of waiting time. And it was becoming more and more frequent. And I was like, I can't send three quarters of my patients to a sexologist. And at the same time, one one woman came and she said to me, doctor, I think I'm broken because I've never had an orgasm. I and she was 34 and I was like this is wrong (laughs) so I started to do to explore first for myself second for my patients at the same time discovered this beautiful world of sex coaching and sex positivity and the power of pleasure and sexual healing and that's when I realized that's what I want to do that's what I want my job to be (laughs) so I became a sex coach I enjoyed listening to this, uh, the the way you described your uh, story, and uh, I was not <laughs> planning to take the the conversation there f- in the beginning, but because you mentioned <laughs> it, I will b- go there uh, right at the very uh, beginning because you mentioned the orgasms, and you know there are misconceptions about the orgasms and. Uh, uh, I suppose that those misconceptions were what led that lady to say that I'm broken. So can you share then what are some common misconceptions that, uh, or cliches, if you want, about uh, orgasms? And uh, how can a better understanding of this topic generally improve our life or sex life in particular? The first thing I like to remind every person I'm working with is that Mm -hmm. pleasure is our nature. If you consider the clitoris, it has thousands of nerves and it has no other function than pleasure. So, you know, denying ourselves pleasure is literally denying ourselves our nature. That shouldn't. It's not written anywhere or there is no 
physical, physiological explanations for mm -hmm. orgasm to be so tricky for people. It became tricky because we live in a crazy situation with internalized sexism, patriarchy, and things like that, and mm -hmm. people having opinions on what you should do with your sexual life and how, for example, if you consider orgasms, there is this thing about how, you know, to be, yeah, to be a real woman, you're supposed to come during penetration, whereas the most pleasurable orgasm, organ, orgasm organ, <laughs> isn't really inside the clitoris, isn't like... There is the G spot, of course, but I think the worst misconception is how we rate the types of orgasm mm -hmm. and also how we think orgasms are supposed to look a certain way because we tend to forget or not know that we have different, hmm, different types of pleasure. You can have a luscious pleasure. You can have a soft pleasure. You can have a passionate pleasure. You can have an angry pleasure as well. You can get angergasm, sadgasm when you work with your emotions. So that's a whole palette that is available. And when you combine this with the exploration of your body, this is an endless playground. Why do you think it certainly, the way you describe it, it certainly uh, sounds like it. Why do, do you think uh, many people deny that to themselves then? Because that's what we have been trained for and that's how things are. So it's more a question of what do we do now mm -hmm. instead of denying it has happened. We can. I also do want to specify that things are getting better, which is great. <laughs> I would like, I love to acknowledge where we came from. During a trip to Asia, we met a guide who told us, I want to have my wife so that I can stop wondering of anything at home. So we have a ton of things to work on here, but we've come a long way. That's great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go back to something uh... I alluded earlier in the in the introduction about the the capacity to feel pleasure, and you say that uh, awakening or expanding our capacity to feel pleasure is one of the greatest tools one can have in you know creating the life that they want and finding uh, fulfillment. So, I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, it's something that it certainly makes sense when you hear it. But I, I wonder how many of us practice it. So I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'd love to start this answer with, has denying yourself pleasure worked before? <laughs> Do you feel good when you deny yourself pleasure and when you beat, you beat yourself all day long to lose weight, do this, do that, have more orgasm, but too much and blah, blah, blah. Personally, it hasn't. <laughs> then... What I love about pleasure is how it helps us expand our safety zone in our nervous system and how, because it's our nature, we slowly reclaim what's ours and how, and how we actually deserve that. If you consider your nervous system, we have some kind of tolerance zone where we feel comfortable and we can manage the um, coming back at a quote-unquote normal state. That's, for example, why you are not yelling at your spouse when they are just, you know, a little bit late. And this tolerance stone can also be influenced by outside factors. Mm -hmm. If you, we all have been in a huge fight and then noticed we were hungry, <laughs> And then when we ate, we were like, oh, I was just hungry. <laughs> so using pleasure, because it's our nature, help us expand that. And when we expand that, we are also able to notice what is wrong about us, not about us, about us as a society, <laughs> and able to 
do something with it, to actually step out of the what I call the autopilot life in this Fifty Shades of Grey, not sexy way of how things are supposed, quote unquote, supposed to be. When you reclaim your pressure, you reclaim your essence. And when you reclaim your essence, your tolerance to the bullshit that is not yours decrease. And when fulfillment or, or simply feeling truly alive is more accessible. You said uh, reclaiming your essence, and that is, uh, in my ears anyway, it sounds like a very spiritual uh, thing to say. Or uh, So the way you were describing pleasure, it sounded to me like, you know, a path to uh, grow spiritually also, not only as personal development, but uh, and, and emotional understanding and all those things, uh, but also spiritual and uh, actually wanted to ask you because uh, you combine the the ancient tantric practices with uh, the modern medicine and i wanted to ask you also about you know how what is the um, how does these uh, different approaches complement each other in uh, in what you do a sentence that I love and I heard for the first time is how sex is the active form of meditation. I've read that somewhere, yes, yes. Well, if you Regarding... approach it, if you approach it in, in, in such, from such a frame of mind. The combining of the ancient wisdom and the modern science is first to actually be aware of what is going on in your sexual system, how pleasure works, uh, what type of organs do you have literally sexy knowledge and it's always helpful to know what's actually going on when you self-pleasure or solo play when you are in a partnership and all of these dynamics have been really well studied in modern science and when you consider the ancient traditions you can get all what's going on about the spiritual quote-unquote world about how we tend to live in an egoistical illusion and trying to differentiate what is the illusion or the autopilot and what is our true essence and also learn how to live with it. Some kind of spirit, some spiritual traditions wants, want us to transcend our human condition. I'm much more a fan of using these uh, traditions to help us be here and experience the whole spectrum of it, the whole spectrum of this human experience. That means you will get the greatest joys and love and also the most epic shit and pain <laughs> <laughs> and get the tools to face all of that. You said about, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You said about, you know, uh, how some um, traditions talk about transcending our human nature. And I thought we all will eventually. So we <laughs> will transcend our human nature. Might as well, before we do <laughs> that, really, as you said, to um, make the most or explore, I don't remember the phrase you used exactly, of our physical existence and uh, everything that it can offer not only to us but also uh, that's how i see it anyway that through through us to whoever else we uh, you know uh, is in our sphere of um, you know the ripple effect comes to mind so first um, my a wise mentor of mine said mm -hmm. if you weren't supposed to be here you wouldn't be here and I was like, huh, <laughs> that's kind of true. <laughs> it sounds like one of those uh, Zen sayings that uh, <laughs> it is so simple and it's very difficult to actually get it. But when you get it, I mean, it, it, it's so simple to, uh, but uh, when you actually get it, it is a proper yeah. revelation. <laughs> I wanted to... Um, Ask a little bit more to uh, ask you to um, explain a bit or go a bit further on that um, deeper connection between um, pleasure 
and let's keep it now to, to sexual pleasure so that we can also follow up uh, later on in the conversation. So the, the connection, the deeper connection between the, the sexual pleasure and the life of, of fulfillment. You already mentioned uh, some elements, but I would like to hear some more thoughts on that. Because as, as I told you before we started recording, I find it very... Uh, I find it utterly fascinating as a topic. I discovered a concept during my training, and I'm sure many people heard about that before. It's the body-mind. So -hmm. that's the intersection of what your body actually feels, like I'm cold, I'm hot, my heart, my feet or my arms are broken or whatever, Mm -hmm. and the mind. So the emotions, the explanations, and there is this sweet intersection in between where the mind can actually express, but in subtle sensations, a tingling, a feeling of any sort. And how these pieces, because they come from our mind, have some kind of consciousness, quote unquote consciousness. You can have a conversation with them, for example. You can get informations from them. And I'm going somewhere with this. (laughs) When you have these conversations, when you realize why these pieces are here, then you get the clarity and they can be alchemized. And to have that, I mean, the simple example is noticing that if you have an inner child that wants to protect your heart from, you know, the pain, then until you feel the pain and help the inner child release that, you will be stuck with this thing. Literally alchemizing our traumas or conditioning, it helps. The saying goes, um, you need to feel it to heal it. And I also love to say, to add to that, you need to feel the sensations, not the story. And um, the good thing with pleasure, as I mentioned earlier, is how it helps our nervous system to tolerate that. So we're not overthrown from by the pain by the guilt by we mix it it becomes more tolerable and when you use that to digest your conditioning to alchemize your traumas you're actually coming closer to who you want to be instead of who you have been conditioned to be I love this answer. And you said you talked about the the tolerance, which you mentioned earlier on in the conversation, but now I, I really got it in a different uh, way because the way I understood, and tell me if that's what uh, comes out, what it came from me, but let me know if it is uh, what you were saying, that by expanding our tolerance, by having more pleasure or different kinds of pleasure and all all those things. At the same time, we are also expanding our uh, capability to handle the other side of the, the spectrum, which is uh, pain. And I suppose you, you did not mean just physical pain. I suppose you also... So talk to me more about this. <laughs> <laughs> what I like to share is, you know, when you work on your money beliefs, for example, you can tell you, say, if I love money, money loves me. If somewhere in your system you have integrated that having money is not safe mm-hmm. because someone t- said something mean while you were a kid or whatever, you can tell your system money is safe. Mm-mm. Inside it will be integrated as, no, money equals danger. So you're going to stay away unconsciously from money, so self-sabotaging and things like that. And that goes in our sexuality too. When we've been trained and told as women how owning our sexuality, owning our desire is unsafe because of rape, rape culture, because of judgment, because of things like that, there is such um, work to do there that is so important. And when you reclaim that safety zone, you can alchemize everything because you digest the physical sensations and at their core, emotions are just physical sensations given meaning by your brain. At the very basic, you can have a quick heart rate because you're angry 
but also because you're seeing your lover or because, mm, yeah, let's put it that way. And also, you can be angry with a small and steady heartbeat, mm -hmm. with a cold anger, for example. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, this is just sensations. And the beauty with sensations, it's just that it is that allowing them space to proceed without getting attached to the story helps them get released. And when they get released, you don't hold on to them anymore because they lose the power. How many of us are afraid to get angry because all the anger we have is going to just blow up into the face of the person in front of us? <laughs> And so that's why it's literally the intersection of physical pain and, yeah, psychological pain. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is great. I, I, what you were saying earlier that the emotions are physical sensations when the, the mind creates a story about them. And uh, that's also in our power to reframe that story as you were saying the faster heart uh, heart rate can mean all sorts of different things or can be caused by all sorts of different sensations but it is up to us to name <laughs> the, the, that story the story is not even though we have default stories that we come back to but we have the power to choose the story and the example i say sometimes is you know when you have the butterflies in the stomach when you are feeling you can say that I'm stressed and terrified, or you can say I'm very excited. Both of them will create that. Uh, so just uh, that as a, I, I add into what you were saying about the, the emotion. Um, you mentioned reclaiming the, the power. I think that was a phrase you used and uh, owning uh, the sexuality. That was another phrase that you used. So, uh, I would like to ask specifically for uh, the women listening, um, what role does that play or sexual power or the owning our sexuality? I don't know if, I think they are related, if I'm correct. So what role does that play for a woman towards creating the life that uh, they want? And even more importantly, how can they start to change the relationship with it or start, uh, you know, progressing with it? Re regarding the progression, it starts simple. So many mm -hmm. of us think that to heal our sexuality, we need to have orgasms lasting for hours and where we yell, yes, yes, like a bad porn movie. <laughs> Whereas true healing starts small. If you have been numb, if you have been disconnected for your body forever or for decades or even for years or months, if you start self-pleasuring and you don't want it, this is not going to heal you. If you want to, please go forward. But So first, there is this reconnection to your senses, and that can start small. Tasting a piece of chocolate, using sensual oil that smell amazing to give yourself massage. I always like to offer to my coaches to start with breast massage because our breasts store so much emotions. And it's also an quote unquote easy way to start the release. Some people are terrified from by their genitals or are disgusted or anything like that. And the, I think the most important part here is to really Honor the pace and not force yourself. And looking for pleasure moment to moment. Pleasure can just be a sensual touch on your shoulders at first. And if that's the only thing that's pleasurable, stay with that. And then when you expand your pleasure capacity so you notice pleasure is safe, then you will want something else. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, the... Mm, reintegrating that pleasure is safe that you are allowed to do that is really it goes into fulfillment in my opinion because when you do that you become more and more whole and 
that's an opinion of mine. Of course, take it or leave it. You cannot truly feel alive 100% experiencing all of it if you're not whole. We cannot selectively numb. If we are afraid of our grief, if we are afraid of our sadness, if we are afraid of our anger, especially because we have the right to be angry, sad, and mad at society and the mess that is going on around us, it can be so overwhelming. So we can be so afraid of that. And because it's so terrifying, we suppress it. And then it's a question, it's just a matter of time how. When you suppress one, the others are becoming more and more gray and you end up numb and you end up what I call the, the autopilot. That is the opposite of fulfillment and pleasure helps you step out of that. That's a wonderful answer, Fanny. Thank you very much. Uh, it's actually been a, a really fascinating conversation and... Uh, uh, there are, I will uh, start uh, to, to wrap it up in a moment, and I do have some uh, final quick questions to ask you. Uh, before I do, uh, will you share with the listener that has absolutely been intrigued by what you're saying, and where can they find out more about you and uh, connect? Mm, the best way to figure out who I am and what I do is to listen to my podcast, which is called Your Sexified Life. Keep mm -hmm. the Y at sexified. Because I'm French, I didn't know how to write that. But <laughs> <laughs> so it's called Your Sexified Life. You can find it everywhere. You can also send me an email at hello at your sexified life dot com. Mm -hmm. And I could give you my Instagram for DMs because I don't use it. <laughs> but if you want to send me a DM there, it's at with Dr. Fanny. But you're aware it's not really sexy because I'm not really an Instagram girl. That's great. Um, Fanny, Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, instead of talking about Instagram, I should have talked about the ebook. I wrote a free ebook, which is called Essence. It's Awaken Your Sexes. Your Sexes. Oh, interesting. Essence, Awakening Your Senses to Reclaim the Pleasure to Be Alive. It's available for free. It comes with my regular love letters. And um, I'd love to hear what you think about it. <laughs> Thank you. I think that is really uh, valuable for someone that has uh, resonated with the conversation today. So it's uh, it's going to be in the show notes to, to go there and uh, download it and read it. Um, uh, Fanny, I have a couple of uh, last like, quick fire questions that I always ask my guests. And the first one is, what does personal development mean to you? It's a great way to do some self-inquiry. Just not forget to actually stay here and do the real work that is way less sexy than <laughs> going into amazing practices. Mm. Bringing the embodiment is key. And we need to be aware of that because that's how it works for real. That's great. And uh, hypothetically speaking, if you could go back in time and meet your, say, 18-year-old self, what's one piece of advice you would give her? Don't go to med school. You're just going to waste <laughs> 10 years. And yes, you will get a title, but turns out it's not really that necessary. And how through healing comes beyond that i'm really happy i did it it brings me some qualities that other people have not but also there was a way to do things differently now <laughs> that i see and also you're normal stop wondering if there's something wrong with you you're normal that's great uh Fanny, I want to thank you very much this uh, i enjoyed this conversation so much and i believe they were uh some important messages there and uh, there is more awareness now about uh, some things that uh, m more than it was before we started this conversation so I, be I believe i really believe that we uh, th that intention is fulfilled uh, i want to wish you all the very best with keeping on uh, changing the lives of uh, women and the people in their environment as a result of that because it expands <laughs> um, before we 
uh, conclude today, what's I like to leave my listeners with some um, part in actionable wisdom. So what's one um, piece of advice, one simple practice you would recommend uh, our listeners to to incorporate into their life and, you know, begin their journey towards better sex? Let's, let's uh, leave it to that question. <laughs> Reconnect to your senses. Even before going to sex, reconnect to your senses. Use central oil that smell amazing to caress mm. your body. If you want to go with your genitals, fine, but just start above if you need. Eat that piece of chocolate or tr- strawberry or anything that feels amazing. And get yourself some movement. Start dancing for five minutes a day. Just because you need some movement to have your body functioning well, because that also alchemizes your traumas, <laughs> let's be honest. So sense, awakening the senses and movement so that you can find space to then explore what's more sexual.